Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on a beautiful sunny spring day. We welcome you all to our very first session of the spring season. Uh, my name is Karamjeet. I'm one of the settlement workers with the Rickman School District. I am joined by three of my colleagues and they will introduce themselves in a minute. Before we start the session, we would like to start with acknowledging the land. We acknowledge and thank the first peoples of the Hunky Minam language group on whose traditional and unceded territories we teach, learn, and live. Thank you, Karamji. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Uh, we are today for Cetrema Worker Swiss um, joining you today. For the people who are joining us today for first time and don't know what really we do in the school district, we are providing settlement support to all the families who are new in the district, either refugees, new immigrants, work permit, work visa, anybody who is new in the school district can receive our help, our service. We help to adjust you and to learn about school system and learn about the community, connect with more people, connect with more services. So uh, all of you are welcome to attend all our sessions. Thank you for being here today. Okay, uh, I'm Inas, one of the Swiss workers. Um, I want to uh, let you know that uh, we have sessions, uh, workshops that we offer for parents about different topics. Uh, next week we have, uh, on April 21st, we have food skills and this will be with Minu Javadi, an excellent chef. We, it will be virtual and you can register yourself. You can uh, join us and we have fun learning something and cooking together virtually. Uh, on May 12th, we have school graduation. So this is for parents who have um, um, student like uh, student children in high school. Um, a counselor will join us and will explain and update us and answer questions. On June 9th, we uh, are having uh, um, Marie Tom, who is the coordinator and manager of uh, this program, the Strong Start, and she will give us a presentation again about how to prepare your child before starting kindergarten in September. You can follow us on um, social media and to learn more. We have other sessions, but the dates and topics are not fixed so far. But if you check regularly, you can find more updated on our social media sites. Okay, I am the last Swiss worker here today. I am actually a youth Swiss worker. My name is Renata and I work with high school students. So if you need any help or support with your kid at high school, just let me know. I'll be happy to help. Uh, I want to give you some directions about today's session. So everybody will be muted. So please, if you have any question, uh, feel free to unmute yourself, uh, make your question. And after that, mute yourself again, please. If you have any technical problems, send a message to me and I will try to help you. Uh, we will take some screenshots and we are also recording the session. So if you don't feel comfortable by showing your uh, face, feel free to turn off your camera. Also in the end of this session, uh, please help us by answering our evaluation form. We're going to give more directions about this later on. Thank you. Okay, and now, yeah, finally, we go to the main point that is having us today. We will have, today we had um, Michael, Mr. Michael Koo. He is the Director of Instruction in Richmond Continuing Education. He is the one in charge of all the programming and all the planning for summer. He is the one, the big one in the district um, 
very experienced in the summer program. So he will share with us today uh, what is happening this year and what kind of exciting programs school district is having for all the families. Thank you, Mr. Ku, for being here today. And now the floor is on you. All right, well, thank you for uh, all your organizing, um, Clara and the team. And um, yeah, thanks for inviting me. I always look forward to the invitation to come and uh, meet and speak with um, the parents of the Richmond School District who are interested in uh, finding out more about learning opportunities in the summer. Um, as Clara mentioned, my name is Michael Koo, uh, Director of Instruction for Richmond Continuing Education. And just a question, Clara, where did you find that photo of me? It's, uh, it's, a, <laughs> it's a funky Is that photo. you? <laughs> I, I don't know where you got that photo, but anyway, it's, uh, uh, anyway, it's good to be here on a sunny spring day, as uh, mentioned already. Um, hope you're well. Um, hopefully you're feeling a bit more energized and optimistic with the sunnier weather, warmer temperatures, and um, with um, the progression of vaccination around the world, especially here in British Columbia. Um, last week, I, uh, I was walking by Shoppers Drug Mart and um, there was a table and I asked a lady what she was doing and she was registering people for the AstraZeneca jab uh, vaccination. So I rolled up my sleeve and got my vaccination last week. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good and um, optimistic that uh, things will continue to uh, roll out even more in the coming days and weeks. So um, hopefully, um, sometime soon will be your opportunity to get vaccinated. All right, so summer learning. Um, I have a PowerPoint presentation, and so I'd like to go through the slides. And um, I think there is, as already mentioned, if you have a question about summer learning, some people call it summer school, uh, which is fine. I call it summer learning. Um, please add it to the chat. And then we'll uh, uh, take pauses along the way and certainly at the very end and I can uh, deal with some questions. Um, as mentioned, I think this session is being recorded and so once the link is available that can be uh, sent out to you and perhaps others. And also the PowerPoint presentation that um, you will see and I'll explain uh, will be made available to you as well. All right, so we'll get started. So as I mentioned, the, um, my uh, time uh, today is talking about our summer learning program. In Richmond Continuing Education, we have programs that run all year. The summer learning or the summertime program is the largest. We have over 4,000 students, school age students from kindergarten to grade 12 that, um, uh, that will take our courses. Uh, we also have programs throughout the year for adults and for, um, for school age students in other areas of continuing education. And um, uh, I'll show you our website later. And uh, perhaps there's another time in the calendar year in the busy Swiss calendar that maybe I can be invited back to give you more of an overview of Richmond continuing education. Summer learning is one part of, of it. Okay. Okay, so uh, the summer learning programs for this year, um, there are many as you can see uh, in the order from the top left is um, academic full credit uh, grades 10 through 12, academic completion, um, grades 8 through 11. And I'll explain what each of these mean, but I'm just going to give you a, a high-level overview. Overview. 
Uh, next is summer camps. And uh, for this year, um, a smaller range of ages, ages nine to 12. Enrichment uh, courses, grades one through 12. And then on the bottom level, uh, summer exploration, grades one through six. Summer innovation, grades one through six. And summer fine arts. So those are the um, main ones that we have available for um, um, parents to consider for their children. Okay, so a little bit more detail. The academic full credit um, program is a very intensive program for grades 10, 11, and 12 courses. So instead of doing the whole course in a year time or right now, in high school, it's called a quarter system. So two and a half months of classes. Um, courses will be completed in five weeks. So very intense, very concentrated. Uh, this program courses will begin on Tuesday, July 6th and go Monday through Friday, all the way through to Friday, August 6th. Uh, the, there will be two schools that will host this program, McMath and Steveston London Secondaries. Uh, there are two options to take courses, either in the morning or afternoon. The morning block starts at 8 a.m., very early, but 8 a.m. to 11.30, or from 12 noon to 3.30 p.m. So either morning or afternoon, and students can choose which block they want. Registration will only be done online and will start on Monday, May 3rd. Monday, May 3rd. And then depending on the grade level, there's different days uh, for during that week that we will begin registration. Registration will start that date and then uh, close on June 13th. Um, so you'll have a few weeks to register. It's best to register as early as possible for all our summer programs because they do fill up quickly. I mentioned about academic completion. Academic completion are for students currently taking a course, but um, at the end of their uh, term or quarter, if they uh, obtained 35 to 49%, so they did not pass the course, and there are typically academic courses, so in English, math, socials, and science. If, if they are in that situation, they can enroll in this program it starts on Tuesday, July 6th and goes to the end of July. Um, this year it will be at Palmer Secondary and there are two blocks so students can take one or two courses. Um, the times are there 8.50 to 11 and 11.30 to 1.40 and online registration will begin at the end of June, uh, Tuesday, June 29th and that's um, because then the fourth quarter of, of schools um, will be finished and report cards will be available. So that's when we'll start registration for academic completion. Summer camps. Uh, summer camps um, are fee paying courses. So uh, whereas the um, academic full credit and completion and all the other programs are funded through the Ministry of Education. So if you are a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident who lives in BC, these courses are tuition free. However, summer camps are not funded by the Ministry of Education. And so we um, charge fees for these courses. Um, and we are um, just offering a smaller number of courses as summer camps this year. One is called Badminton Plus, 
and the other is called, uh, sorry, is baking and cooking. These um, camps will start Monday, uh, July 6th and go to Friday, July 3rd. Um, <clears throat> these are not all day courses, uh, camps. They are two hours and 10 minute blocks. Um, they will be located at McNeil Secondary School. That's on number four road. And the cost will be $295 to $395. Online registration begins on Monday, April 26th. Here are some nice photos of a uh, uh, nice the boy that took this uh, badminton camp uh, a few years ago. And this is, of course, a non-COVID shot, <laughs> no masks, no social distancing. So this was taken uh, about, uh, oh, several years ago. In fact, Clara, you might recognize my daughter, uh, Ileana, she's in grade 10 now, but she took this uh, uh, a baking camp many years ago. Oh, okay. Um, and this, uh, yeah, the baking and cooking camps are very hands-on. They're making things, baking and making things every day. And so you get to sample um, each day. So um, every day I, I got something delicious from the baking camp. So very popular um, for boys and girls ages 9 to 12 years old. Okay, so the next one is um, enrichment grades one through seven, uh, non-credit. So courses for elementary students um, in a variety of areas are non-credit. Uh, they are 40, just over 40 hours of instruction. And so some of the um, possibilities are concert band. So that would be at the intermediate level. English for ELL students, academic English, focusing on reading and writing, French, and the French can be, we call it fun with French, so that could be for non-French immersion students, and we also have French for French immersion students. We also offer a math science combined course called Math Science Cool Projects. So they'll be working on inquiries and uh, projects during that course. And then new this year is a physical and health education course, which will focus on soccer, soccer plus, but there will be other aspects of physical and health education. Uh, that's a new course. We're excited to offer it. Um, these will run Tuesday, uh, July 6th to the end of July, July 30th. There are three blocks of time and uh, we will offer courses in those variety of uh, blocks from the morning, starts at 825 for block one. Um, block two will start at 1105 and block three at 145 p.m. And I will um, also talk about uh, toward the end, how many courses you can register for, because there's some rules around that. These courses, although they're elementary courses, they will be hosted at uh, two secondary schools of your choice. So either Boyd Secondary or McNeil Secondary. So one on the west side, one on the east side. Online registration for these courses start on Tuesday, April 27th. So I'm going to pause there for a moment to see, because uh, I've gone through a few slides. Are there any questions? Um, you can put this on the chat or um, unmute and ask a question. If not, I'll proceed on. It looks like there are no questions. If anybody has a question, please either write or, or, or talk, right? Anything is okay with my question. I have two questions here. Um, 
uh, Sakura is asking, hi there, are all the courses for kids at grade one above? And Sakura is asking, as my girl is only four years old, I'm just wondering if this workshop is not for me. Oh. Okay, well, it's, um, yeah, if your child is four years old, I think your daughter will not be in kindergarten, correct? So if so, this program is not for her. So the minimum is that the students would be this year in kindergarten. Thank you, my She goes to the JK in this coming September. So it's not a kindergarten yet, it's a junior kindergarten. Yeah, yeah so uh, unfortunately, um, those who are not in kindergarten or up to grade 12 uh, are not eligible for this summer learning program. But it's good to know about it because I hope that um, when your child reaches kindergarten or higher, that they would um, you would consider uh, one of our many different programs in the summer. Hi, Mike. There's a question. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. She's asking if there is fee for the enrichment courses. Mm -hmm. Good question. So uh, there are, it's tuition free, so no cost for all the enrichment courses, unless, uh, a, unless the parent is a, um, unless the student is international. So it's tuition free for, if the, the parents are not paying tuition now, then it's tuition free in the summer. Thank you. The other question is, do private school students register at the same time this year? Good question. So yes, that's the plan, is that all students can register at the same time. Last year, because of um, the uh, pandemic and, and, the, the, and pivoting to online, it was all, um, it was a priority for Richmond students. So this year, I'll, I'll explain that a little later. But yes, um, it's um, first come, first serve, and all um, BC residents can register at the same time. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question is about the physical education program or the soccer. Mm -hmm. The question is, is it going to be indoor or outdoor? Mm -hmm. Good question. So it'll be outdoor and there might be some days that would be indoor depending on the weather and the learning. Because it's not gonna just be soccer all the time. There'll be some other learning with an emphasis and a focus on soccer. And the, the last question for now is uh, the web page where we can register our kids. So I hope Michael, you will be getting to that in the last slide or so, so people can see where to go actually to do the registration. Thank yeah, you. so uh, we'll do a little demo on that for sure. Okay, you're good for now. Okay. Oh, another one, sorry, just popped up. <laughs> um, so just want to double check about the kids going to start kindergarten this September. So Amy, if you can clarify, uh, like what's your question? Is it like the children who are starting kindergarten, can they join this summer or what's on your mind? Yes, yes, I'm still typing my question. So the kids who is going to start kindergarten this September, so can we register this summer or we have to wait until next summer? Yes, you need to wait till next summer. Okay, that's clear. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> that's okay, thank you. Okay. I'm sorry to, to interrupt that for parents who are here today, notice that the kids will be starting kindergarten in September. We are having a session on June 9, and that will be information about how to get prepared for kindergarten. So basically will be some information of things you can do during summer with your children. So you are welcome to attend that session. We will email later on uh, the information. And I think that will be good information for all the parents who are starting the kids kindergarten in September. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the information. You're welcome. Okay, well, we'll move on and um, certainly take uh, other questions as we move along. 
Sorry, uh, there's <laughs> they keep popping up now. Um, and again, like some of the questions you may answer so you can um, yeah. you know reply accordingly. Oh. Can my son stay in the enrichment for the whole day taking courses? Mm, good question. So um, this year, because of of COVID, students will be limited at the elementary level to just one course. So it will not be a full day, unfortunately. Okay. So in the past, students can take one free course and then pay for one or two camps, but we're limiting because of COVID and keeping cohorts, uh, the students in as small group as possible, only one uh, course. So it'll be just uh, two hours and 10 minutes or two hours and 45 minutes per day. Good question. And the last question is on the registration date, and I believe each slide has the registration date for the courses. Mm -hmm. um, and again, as Michael said, that may be available for you upon request. Uh, so we can share that information with you after uh, this presentation. Okay, great. Great questions. Yeah. Very good questions. <laughs> All right. So here's some uh, photos of uh, boys and girls in the elementary program. Um, who are part of, um, well, these are stock photos, but anyway. Um, okay, over to high school. I know most of you on this call are elementary, is that right? Most uh, elementary um, pa um, parents of elementary students. But here's just a sample of similar enrichment. These are non-credit courses at the grade eight, nine, 10, up to grade 12 level. Um, these are also very popular. Um, this is a new course that we offered last year, uh, business ed, business education, grades eight through 10, um, yeah, and uh, genius hour. So that's project-based learning, jazz band, English for ELL. We have a physical fitness, um, uh, physical and health education course focusing on fitness and conditioning. These are for older students, grades 10 through 12. Previewing courses at the grade eight to nine and 10 level for English, math, science, and social studies, including pre-calculus 11. We'll have three blocks of time for students to choose from. Um, and again, I'll talk more about this, uh, the types of courses in a moment, but this is um, the, um, In-person classes will be at Burnett Secondary. Online registration will begin on Monday, May 10th. So this is for um, high school students. And also many um, students who are in grade seven will take the preview grade eight English or math 10, uh, math eight, preview math eight or science eight or socials. Um, so very popular for grade seven students to take these courses um, as well. And these are for the older students as mentioned. So back down to elementary students, this is summer exploration, non-credit, hands-on active learning with some outdoor experiences. This is interdisciplinary, so that means um, across curriculum, inquiry-based learning, using technology. Instead of um, um, a four-week program, this is three weeks. It'll start on Thursday, July 8th, going through to Wednesday, July 28th. And there are two blocks to choose from, either morning time, which starts at 9 a.m., goes to 11.45 a.m., or the afternoon block, 12.30 to 3.15. Uh, this program, Summer Exploration, will be at Brighouse Elementary and registration will begin April 26th. Um, and there you can see some photos of students um, working on projects, working together, Again, this was taken probably two years ago. And so this year with COVID, um, we expect students to be wearing masks, 
they'll be working separately um, more so than they um, are in this photo. That being said, the students in all our programs in the summer will be in a cohort, means that they will be only in that group and the group will be um, maybe a group of 20 to 25, 28 students maximum. So um, elementary students will just take one course and that course, that class will be the cohort. They won't be mixing with other students. Uh, do you have a question on the chat? And there was one that was uh, from someone who said their son came from Brazil and is in kindergarten. And they were asking if the English course is indicated for incoming students. So I'm assuming that they just want to know, or they can, uh, Rafael, you can unmute and ask if I'm not asking the correct question. Uh, I believe like if they're already in kindergarten, Michael, you can answer like, can they take the English courses within summer learning? Yeah, so um, let me just look at the question too. Yeah. So if um, a student is here in Richmond, in school or anyone in British Columbia, then they're eligible to take a course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, my name is Rafael. Uh, my son is in Richmond Elementary School in Cook. Mm -hmm. And in the kindergarten, we just arrived from Brazil uh, two months ago and mm -hmm. we need to improve uh, his English. And what is more adequate course for him in the summer? Right, so we have, um, in fact, um, ELL for the young children uh, who are currently in kindergarten grade one um, and that uh, would be a perfect course uh, perhaps for your child um, who were to work on his English. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So look I for that. Well. I want to apologize for pronouncing your name wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, my name is Raphael. Okay. okay, somehow I, I thought I pronounced wrong because I know okay, some okay. Spanish yeah. names, it's different. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so there's another question. Um, hi, Michael, I trust this session is recorded. Any chance you could share the recording session later on? I think we, we already touched on that. So yes, we can make that available um, to you. Another question is, can I participate both in enrichment and exploration course? Mm -hmm. Great question. And the answer is no. You need to choose just one course. Um, this is true for any summer, but certainly the summer um, for sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I'm going to go over, uh, I'll show a table, so it'll be more clear later. Good questions. Okay, so another option um, from enrichment elementary or the um, exploration. Another one for elementary students is fine arts um, for grades one to grade six students. Uh, it's non-credit and students will, uh, will learn some of visual arts, uh, dance and drama and music. And that program is also three weeks uh, Thursday, July 8th to Wednesday, July 28th at Westwind Elementary School. And a very popular program registration will start on Monday, April 26th. So that's um, fine arts. And uh, here's a, a picture uh, that was um, uh, painted by Henry in grade four. This was uh, last year. And last year, the fine arts was done virtually online. And this is something that uh, Henry painted, it was amazing. And there's all sorts of samples. Um, later on, I'll go to my website and you can look at samples that were done last year in our virtual fine arts program in the summer and um, see what uh, the children uh, did there. Um, if you, I have a, um, this is the uh, visual art. Uh, there is a um, little sample of some solo singing, singing of a student who sang, I think it looks like in her kitchen. So um, if I can just play that, it's just a, a few seconds. It is posted up on YouTube, but here's a link to it. And this is, was done last year, a solo recording, a 
of a young girl and she posted it for her teacher to um, to uh, review. So here we go. Should work. Now, um, can you see the YouTube or probably not? I, I probably need to um, share that. Just hold on. I need to switch. Ah, can you see it now? Yeah. Yes. Okay, here we go. Okay, so uh, <laughs> that was um, a student from last year because she was learning from home. She was singing from home, and uh, this year we hope that um, uh, the, we can do the uh, program. Plan is to do it in person, and that uh, they'll be singing, but you know, in a safe way, socially distant, um, the best they can. Uh, this summer as part of fine arts summer learning um, the last uh, summer program for elementary students that we have um, open to the public is summer innovation this is again non-credit this one is focused on using digital devices computers laptops and so on and computer applications again looking cross-curricular inquiry-based learning um, but more on technology focused. Um, and uh, July 8th to the 28th of July, two blocks of time like exploration, like fine arts to choose from morning or afternoon. We'll also be at Brig House Elementary registration starting at the end of April. And uh, again, a more focus on technology as students ex do um, different types of projects um, from coding to um, uh, using different applications on computer. Michael, we have a question when you, you come to cancellation, please, if you can answer uh, if the district cancels the any program due to uh, health restriction, if you can talk about this, please, if it will be a refund or not. Ah, okay, yeah. Um, well, uh, we hope that we don't get shut down, but uh, we certainly will be in compliant with public health orders. So uh, this actually um, dovetails really nicely to uh, this uh, slide that I have on important information. So right now, um, we are planning that most courses for summer learning 2021 will be taught in person in classrooms uh, with school district health and safety protocols and with students in cohorts. So they'd be in their class bubble or grouping. Um, just so you know, we will have a limited number of courses that will be delivered using a hybrid online model of instruction. And hybrid online is simply to mean that it will be mostly online remote and there'll be components where there'll be live um, time of synchronous learning. So that'd be on um, probably not Zoom, but probably on a platform called Microsoft Teams and um, but limited number of courses. So right now, most of the plan is for most of the courses to be in person, students uh, in their um, um, cohorts uh, following health and safety protocols that are currently in place. Now, if conditions change, so if our um, pandemic and our infection rates and so on continue to climb and go up, then if it changes, our delivery model might change from in-person to hybrid online so that we keep 
students and staff and families as safe as possible. We might need to uh, fine tune some details, um, but we will, we call it pivot. We will need to change, we will need to adapt as needed. Now, in terms of refunds, um, if you're paying uh, tuition free, so if you're paying zero dollars and we cancel the course or you withdraw because um, <clears throat> you change your mind, your child changes his or her mind, then there's no refund because you didn't pay any money. However, if uh, you are an international student or if the child is an international student and um, the tuition for any of our courses in the summer that are for elementary students is $700. So for international students, we do not get money from the government, from the tax dollar. So they are funding their own way. The course cost for an international student at the elementary level is $700. In, in the case where we cancel the course or we cancel summer learning altogether, then there'll be full refund. If uh, you register and you pay $700 and you change your mind, we will hold back $30 for to process the refund to pay for the bank fees. Does that cover the question? Michael, there's a couple of questions on the previous slide. So mm -hmm. someone asking uh, if you can go back and explain uh, the difference between summer exploration versus summer innovation and yeah. also someone would want to spend a little bit more time on the summer in, in uh, innovation at Brickhouse Elementary. Thank you. Yeah so um, there is um, the main difference is that um, summer exploration is not as technology focused and we'll be looking at more hands-on project-based learning and there might be some outdoor learning experiences for summer exploration. Summer innovation is more on technology-based learning. So you'll be using the, um, the devices and computers more than in exploration. And um, what was the other thing about spending more time on innovation? Um, I think you already spoke to that. This is a slide that they wanted to get more information from. Um, Amy, if you still have a follow-up question, uh, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask uh, away from Michael. If all is good, then I guess we are moving on. There is no more questions for now. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, so this is an important piece of the puzzle that our plan right now is mostly in-person courses, um, limited number uh, hybrid online, and, um, and uh, we hope that this will be the case uh, that we can do. Um, I just wanna speak briefly about the hybrid online model that students who uh, enroll in these courses um, will need to come in to school once or twice, up to three times, to touch base with this, the, the teacher for um, instruction, for assessment, um, also to show the report cards because the hybrid online model that we did, uh, the online model we did last year, it was difficult because uh, we had to check report cards and, and so on. And so we're gonna have a time where students will be required to come in to classrooms with masks, physically distant uh, in cohorts, probably will split up the, the class. If say there's uh, 25, 24 students, one day 12 will come in to meet the teacher for uh, a lesson on one of the days in the first week. And on the other day, the other 12 students will come in physically distant, meet the teacher, report card check, uh, get to know each other. And then, then afterward, they'll be online uh, with the teacher for their course. And then um, there could be a time where they come together towards the end of the course. Again, half the class for one day, half the class on the other so that there's a lot of physical space um, for the students. So that would be the online course. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, um, 
that um, that the students, um, uh, elementary students, they need to be students in BC and they need to be physically here. Whether the course is um, hybrid online or in person, the, they need to be here in British Columbia to take one uh, one course. So that's enrichment, exploration, fine arts, or innovation, one of them only, or one of the summer camps. Um, and the idea again is to keep um, the groups as uh, small as possible so that we can uh, um, reduce risk as much as possible. Um, I also wanted to note, and as I mentioned already, grade seven students may take uh, enrichment grade eight to 12 courses. So on to uh, secondary students, and uh, <clears throat> that includes grade seven students. So um, the grade seven students could take enrichment grades eight to 12 courses. Now, in the past, students taking grade eight to 12 courses can take one, two, up to three courses. This year, again, because of the COVID situation, we are limiting students to take one in-person course only. So a maximum of one in-person. And if students want to take more than one course at the grade eight to 12 level, they can do so, but they must be hybrid online courses. So that's uh, an important distinction for this year. So grade seven, grade eight, grade nine, grade 10, grade 11, grade 12 students can take up to three courses but only one in person and the, the other ones would be hybrid online courses. And when you register, we will clearly state what mode of instruction the course is, in person or online. But this rule has to be um, um, planned and understood. For academic completion courses, uh, the students will be cohorted in their grade level and they can take one or two courses in full credit. So these are the grade 10, 11, and 12 courses. Because of the pandemic situation and, co and the current requirement for grouping students together in cohorts, there will restrict students to only one course. So in previous years, you could take one or two. This year, only one in person. If you want, if students want to take a second course, they can do that through Richmond Virtual School, which is part of the Richmond School District. Okay, so uh, just to summarize uh, which program at which level and which instructional model we will offer at the uh, enrichment elementary level, so grades one through seven, most of the courses will be in person and some limited would be hybrid online. For exploration, fine arts and innovation, we will only at this time have in-person options. At the high school level, completion will be in-person, full credit in-person. Um, whoops, sorry about that. And the um, summer camp is in person. Okay. Actually, I'm looking at one summer camp that might be offered that's hybrid online or would be fully online. So, but um, that's the plan right now. Um, are there some questions? Karamji, do you want to check? Yeah, some? there was one question um, was, is there a fee for summer exploration? So of all the programs, the only one that has fees for a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident or someone on a work permit is summer camps. The rest are all zero dollars. Michael? Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question about com uh, completion uh, grade eight to 11. You said they are allowed for two, up to two. Mm -hmm. uh, both in person or one will be in person and one uh, virtual? Yeah, good question. They will be in person, both in person. Okay. And that's because at the high school level, 
right now, the cohort number maximum is 120 and okay. completion for the grade eight students, they will be in less than that. Okay. Less than, yeah, so they'll be okay there. Again, we will follow health and safety protocols to make sure they will have masks, but um, uh, they'll take all in person. Good question. Thank you. Michael, someone asked again about the summer camp fee. Yes. How That's much is it? Um, well, uh, badminton will be $295 and the baking and the cooking will be somewhere between $380 to $390, somewhere in that range. I think okay, yeah, I'm so, answering the next one. Uh, again, people were asking, can kindergarten students attend the courses? And you answered yes. Um, if they are already in kindergarten to grade 12 within the Richmond School District, yes, they can uh, attend any of the summer programs um, through summer learning. Right, so any student um, in currently in a BC school, independent or public, can attend our program so um but they need to uh be current students and the uh, minimum age or grade level is kindergarten um of course if it's in person and someone lives in um, prince george they're eligible but they have to come down to richmond we have a hybrid online option but we will require them to still come in person for one or two or three sessions. So they need to be here for that, if that makes sense. So they have to be physically in British Columbia. Um, yeah. Now, if someone is uh, lives, it's a bit challenging, but say someone wants to come from somewhere in the world, another country to come in the summer to take these programs, these are not designed for students who currently live in another country. These courses are designed for students who are taking education in kindergarten to grade 12 courses in a BC school. These are designed to uh, uh, help their learning, enhance their learning for current students. Okay. Now, I'll also say that um, on our website, which I'm going to show you shortly, uh, there'll be more details. We'll also be publishing a, um, a document, multi-page document that you can um, look through. We'll have more details, this information and prices. I just want to acknowledge to the people who are asking through chat. Um, so some of the questions around the prices about all of those will be answered as Michael said in that, um, in, sorry, can you say that again? The Richmond Continuing Education? Yeah, our summer catalog will have yeah. uh, some details. Yeah, more details. Okay. Uh, so this is giving you a sneak preview because uh, we're still working on that catalog. So you're getting information that no one has right now. Just uh, this is cutting edge information. Um, Okay, so uh, you need to register online, as I mentioned. It'll start um, with the elementary programs starting the end of April. One thing that um, you can do um, if you don't have it already is to get the personal education number. It's a nine digit number from your school. So you'll need that when you register your child um, and uh, on the day of registering for the course there will be a prompt what is the personal education number short is pen p-e-n personal education number nine digits and so please write that down uh, for your child if you have more than one child then be careful make sure you don't mix up the numbers uh, even now if you don't have a an account for your child not for you for your child you can create an account today I'm going to show you the website and how to create an account. Um, and if you have more than one child, then you need to have more than one account. Um, and when you set up an account for your child and it asks for a date of birth, 
please put your child's date of birth, not your date of birth, not the parent. Okay. And then uh, one note is, um, I know this is a bit of a challenge because some many report cards are now electronic, but please bring a copy, a paper copy of the student's, your child's report card to the first day of class. If you have any questions, feel free to obviously contact our Swiss uh, team um, or call our office. And there's the phone number here. And um, what I'll do right now, if there isn't any other questions, is to show you the website for Richmond Continuing Education. So maybe before we go to the website, um, Karanjit, uh, are there any questions or the kind yeah. of... Sure. There was one about uh, the fee for summer camp, and someone was asking, is it the same fee for the students here in Canada, domestic students and international, or is there a difference yeah. for the summer camp? Yeah, great question. The, this, the international students will pay a premium. They'll pay a higher cost. Okay, thank you. So the, the, the amount I quoted was for um, uh, domestic or Canadian citizens, permanent residents. Good question. Yeah, the other one was, and now we have time, uh, regarding the expiration or enrichment, they, will they run every weekday or on specific days of the week? Like, is it five days thing or is it on few days? Good question. So uh, Monday through Friday, however, the first week for enrichment will start on Tuesday. So don't go to class on Monday because there's no class, the teachers will be preparing but it'll start on Tuesday, then go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The following week will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So the first week, a little bit strange because they'll start on Tuesday for enrichment. For exploration, for fine arts and innovation, they'll start on Thursday. So don't go to school on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. There'll be no, no, no teachers teaching, but it'll start on Thursday friday and then the following week we would monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday and it will end on a wednesday yeah so it's just a um a funny a little bit strange in terms of the start date um but uh, that's how we run the program yeah i responded to someone just wanted to confirm i responded correct um, the elementary students, they can only choose either enrichment or summer camp. And I said, yes, only one, right? Is that right, Michael? Yeah, so um, either a camp or enrichment or, or exploration or fine arts or innovation. Just one course this summer or one camp. In the past... Uh, students can do one course and one camp. This year, just one. Um, there's another question. Uh, is summer camp only for Richmond School District students? And I think um, you already mentioned, but if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah, they can, they can uh, any student can take any of the programs as long as they qualify for that, right? So the right age or the right grade level, and uh, also, other than the kindergarten students, students in kindergarten can take the grade one course. Um, so when you look at the courses and it says grade five, six, and seven, it's, it's uh, the intention is for the students to be in grade five now, not grade five in September. So not grade four, will be grade five, but currently in grade five. Yeah. And then the only and the other exception is the grade eight courses are very popular because they are um, the preview courses are very popular for grade seven because the grade seven students are looking ahead to um, uh, the high school courses. So a grade seven student can take a grade seven course, one course, or um, a grade seven student can take grade eight or grade high school courses, and they can take one, two, or three courses. But they can't do elementary and secondary. You get to choose one or the other for grade seven. Thank you. I don't see any other questions for now. If you want to take us to the website. Sure. Oh, 
Okay, so um, our web address to find Richmond Continuing Education. Um, I don't know if someone can type this in. It's uh, www.richmondce.ca. So that's our website domain, and it will bring you to this website, Richmond Continuing Education. Um, right now on the left-hand side is um, a download of our winter spring catalog. And hopefully early next week, I'm hoping by Monday, this will have our summer catalog. So, um, um, so that's uh, the where the catalog will be. Um, to register, uh, you click here on the right hand side, it says register online. So I'm going to click here. And this brings you to our course registration page. So right now we don't have any of our summer programs listed here because we're still um, um, finalizing the details. You want to mute Excuse whoever me, um... Yes, can you please mute yourself? There is a sound there. Or um, if you're, okay. whoever's host, you can mute someone. You can just mute, mute everyone except me. <laughs> All right, so um, so here is, uh, as I mentioned, that we have a number of other programs in the Richmond Continuing Education. And so, for example, we have an adult secondary grad program and it's very popular for adults who want to improve their English, especially in their reading and writing. We also have uh, Mandarin Language Studies and a youth and children program that um, parents can uh, register for and um, yeah, so that's uh, these uh, programs here. So when you come to this page, so um, if you click on register online uh, early next week, you'll come to this page and you'll see summer options, summer exploration, summer fine arts, you'll see enrichment here. And uh, so as an example, we're just gonna go into, into, into um, say, Mandarin, uh, you'll click here and then there'll be some options here and you'll, you can click here on the courses and it will tell you about the course, the, 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 if there's a cost to it, um, and how many spaces remain, when registration will open, uh, a little description about it. And if you want that, you have to add to cart fill out information and make sure you go to checkout. Okay, so that's um, to uh, navigate the, um, the courses. Now, if you haven't created an account, you can do so even today to come to this website on the top right hand corner is create an account. So you click on this and you would fill in and this is a customer student account. So um, again, if you're filling this out for one of your children, fill in their name, not yours. So the first name is their first name, um, legal first name. If there's a usual name, you can put that as a middle name and then the last name. And then just follow all the prompts. You just click on going next, next. Uh, and fortunately, I can't show you all the steps, but just follow the steps and, and then create an account. Um, if you have more than one child, I suggest that the because you will choose to set a log in name, I would log in with your child's first and last name. And then you can have different accounts with the same email address, say, for example, your email address. Um, so the receipt comes to your email, not your child's email. Okay, so um, sometimes parents will set up an account with an email address. And then they have to create like two or three or four different emails. So create the login with the child's name. So you remember, oh, I'm uh, signing in, uh, you know, Sally Wong's um, for Sally Wong. Then you're registering Sally in a course and you want to do Robert. You'll do Robert as a login. Otherwise, um, you might forget whose email 
you are logging in for who, if you use an email for a login, okay? So that's our, our website. Um, I guess I want to uh, pause to see if there's any other um, questions. I am not seeing anything at the moment, but um, if we missed any questions from anyone, mm -hmm. uh, please feel free to unmute yourself now and ask away now. Or if you prefer typing it again, oh, there is a question now. Um, is there a way to get the other accounts usernames? I registered my kids, but forgot the usernames for them. Yeah, great question. In fact, um... I'm going to uh, put the um, uh, the email address. So for our office, um, so for Richmond uh, Continuing Education, I'll just put this in the chat. Give us a call. Yeah, because because of COVID nineteen, uh, we recommend our customer uh, can make appointments, so we can reserve some time for uh, them to try it and ask a question. Yeah. Is that for me? That was, yeah, no, <laughs> who, who was that? Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, so there's our our office, uh, phone number, and then the email address. So for example, if you already have an account, but you forgot the login or the password, you can reset your um, password. So you can go in and reset it. But if you don't, if you wanna call someone, there's the phone number or email us, and we will reset the password, send you a temporary, password and you can log in and then change your password to something more secure. Um, now, the, someone just mentioned something about COVID protocols and making appointments. I, I missed that. Can you repeat that? I think it was not for you, Michael. Oh, okay. yeah. I was confused. It seemed like someone was very clear asking here, but probably meant for someone else. Okay. Um, another question is, will this seminar I guess this session um, will be presented again at different time. And yes, uh, Clara, you may be better able to answer this when and uh, um, yeah, when. <laughs> I know today in the afternoon at Rosina 101 said it will be another presentation. I'm not sure if that will be have also in a Chinese interpretation. And tomorrow at 10 a.m. will be another session for sure with Chinese interpretation. This was the only one only in English. And a great way to know that is to go on our uh, Facebook page because that information should be there. So, yeah. And this session is being recorded as well, right? So it'll be made available. Yes. So please, uh, that I, I, I take Alpantas now. If you want the recording or the presentation, please leave us your email so we can email you the presentation after the session at the end we are going to have the evaluation form so you will have the space to write your email so we can send you all this information and i believe the um, recording will also have a, a recording of the um the chat so there's some questions some answers there <clears throat> you'll have that in the recording so. And also, if you don't have the account yet and you need to create it and you need help, please contact your Swiss worker, contact us. We can help you to create the account so you don't have any problem. You are ready for April 26th. In fact, um, on our website, you see this help. Uh -huh. um, and if you click on here, this was um, uh, information that was... Um, is both in English, Chinese, and Arabic. And it was thanks to the Swiss team that put this together. So let's check out Arabic here. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see, where did That's it go? Good. It's all right, I'm just. Um, where did we... Sorry, I'm just trying to look for the, uh, the download. Ah, here it is. So this took a lot of work and I'm so appreciative. Ines, did you do this one? No, Ines, you're muted. You also have the Razak, right? So this is um, step by step in Arabic. 
um, of uh, the different information you need to set up an account. And uh, so um, this is also um, very helpful on, on to do it. Um, in Arabic, there's English and there's uh, a Chinese translation. So that's on our, um, uh, on my website and you can click on help and then there's some information there if that's helpful if not uh, feel free to reach out to any of the swiss team and if not um, my office and um, my staff uh, or myself will reach out to you to help you out yeah uh, michael i have a question will be a specific time for the registration i don't know you already oh mentioned. yes very good um Yes, so on our, um, uh, the times for the starting of registration uh, usually starts around four o'clock. Yeah. Uh, 3.30 or four o'clock. It, um, it will be on the website information, but um, yeah, usually in the afternoon and um, yeah. Yeah, that's when it'll open. Um, and if you're wanting to get right on it, I log in about, um, 10 or 15 minutes earlier from the start. And at some point, uh, five minutes before or something, there'll be a countdown clock. So it'll go like yeah. <laughs> four minutes and uh, 30 seconds, 29 <laughs> seconds. So once it's on, you can go for it, but make sure you have all the information ready. Make sure you have your account set up, make sure you know the password. So you're not, yeah. you know, fumbling and, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is a question. When I log in with my username, I can see when selecting a course, my kids' names to add the course to them. Can I use this way to register them instead of logging with their own username? So I guess yes. they want to ask like if they logged in through their yes. login. Yes, it is possible yeah. as long as they are connected to your account. Um, so it is possible. I don't do that way, but it is possible. Um, yeah, but I would try it ahead of time before you do it. Otherwise, set up separate accounts. It's uh, easier that way. Yeah, just a comment uh, on on the registration, Michael. I used this last year. Um, it is a little bit crazy, but it's much better than the city registration. So city program, the websites crash and whatnot. Um, yours, it worked kind of well when I did it for my kids last year in summer. Well, um, the city I know has an older system um, owned by the same company that I use. It's the same owner. Um, and I don't know if and when they're changing their system, but um, this system we've had in place for a number of years now, maybe seven or eight years. We used to have an older system that crashed out and it was bad, very bad. But this one, yeah, it's much better. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I don't see any more questions, so I guess. I, that, thank you so much for um, all your questions and interest in summer learning. I think it's a, even though um, you know sometimes uh, the school year is long and it's great to get the kids um, into something else, something more active. We're trying to um, offer good quality programs, both for to help their mind as well as their body. Um, engage in something different and and uh, exciting. We have great teachers, some of the best teachers, um, so dedicated to learning and safety. Um, and um, our staff, um, we're doing our hiring night now. And one of the great things is most of the teachers who have taught with us in the past are always, they love teaching in the summer. Um, and it's because of the children that come and engage in the learning. They, um, the teachers, even though they work so hard through the school year, a number of them really love the summer. It's, an, it's a different pace, um, sometimes a different subject than what they usually teach. And um, it all works out um, really well. So I'm excited for this summer. Uh, let's continue to be hopeful and prayerful that the um, COVID-19 uh, pandemic will become more under control. Um, if you're uh, scheduled for a vaccination soon, hopefully you will take that opportunity to um, make yourself more uh, secure from 
serious illness and your children as well. And um, yeah, so thanks so much. Thanks uh, Claire and the team. Thanks to Kramji for helping with and Renata and Ines uh, for everything, for welcoming me here. And um, 